Alright guys, welcome back. Today we're going over the Day 7 matches for the 2023 World Darts Championship. Uh, this is on Wednesday, December 21st. <clears throat> There's afternoon and evening sessions. There's two first round and two second round matches in the afternoon and in the evening and there's four second round matches. <clears throat> These are the last two first round matches in the tournament. Uh, everything after them is going to be second round. So Thursday and Friday there's going to be eight second round matches each. So you got something to look forward to. For all these second round matches, I'm going to be going over the stats from the first round for the player that made it through, uh, just to give you an idea of how they play, how they should play against their opponent. First match, we have John O'Shea versus Darius Labanaskis. Uh, O'Shea qualified through the Pro Tour Order of Merit, while Labanaskis qualified through the PDC Nordic and Baltic qualifiers. This is O'Shea's debut, and Labanaskis made it to the quarterfinal in 2020. They've played each other twice, and they've split matches, both of those in Players' Championships this year. Power rankings, O'Shea slightly higher on TV, maybe 40 points higher. Averages, dead nuts, O'Shea slightly higher in the 180s, and checkout percentage, first nine, first three, almost the same. Slightly higher for O'Shea. You're looking at all these numbers, they're all very close, which is why you're going to see Darts Oracle say it's a 48 to 52 chance here. In these scenarios, even though I've been wrong uh, a few times already this year, um, I like to pick the guy that's been on the stage before. Darius has played on the big stage before. He's hit nine darters on this big stage. I, I think he thrives in this environment, and uh, I think just the experience alone is why I'm going to be going, and I'm picking Darius to win this one. Martin Kleermacher versus Chen Han. Clearmacher qualified through the Pro Tour Order of Merit, while Han qualified through the PDC China Premier League. Uh, this is Han's debut, uh, while Clearmacher made the last 16 last year. They've never played each other, um, and there's not any stats on uh, Han here. I looked him up on the PDC China Premier League, uh, and he seemed to be averaging between 67 and 81 for the most part. Um, this isn't going to be enough to beat Clearmacher. As you see, he's been averaging 90 the whole season. Decent amount of 180s, 38% checkout percentage, first 9, first 3, both close to 100. Power rankings are decent here. Arts Oracle is saying 87%. That might be a little biased due to the lack of data. i got to say, if he's putting up 67, 75 averages in the Premier League, it's not going to be enough, uh, especially in set play. Uh, even if he gets ahead quick, I think Clearmacher is just going to outlast him here. And I think he takes it down the majority of the time. i got to go Clearmacher to win this one. That was the last first round match of the tournament. The rest are going to be second round. All right, we have Callan Rids versus Josh Rock. Rids qualified through being in the top 32 in the world. And Rock through the Pro Tour Order of Merit. Rids made it to the quarterfinal of the Worlds last year. While well, this is Rock's debut. They've never played each other. Um, looking at Rock's stats from the first match, he had three 180s, 16 140s, an average of 93.4, and a checkout percentage of 47.7. Very good stats compared to the rest of the field. Let's see how it compares to his overall stats this year and Callan's stats. Looking at the averages, Josh is at a 96, so he, he averaged close to where he was all year. Um, Callan's right with him, though. Um, checkout percentage... 39 and 40, first 9, first 3, all 4 over 100. Um, where we see, start seeing our difference between the two players here is the number of 180s. Rock's about twice as many 180s as Callan, and if you look at his TV power ranking here, over 100 points higher. If you look at the Darts Oracle chance to win, they're saying Rock's about 75%. I'd have to agree with him here. Although with Callan's numbers here, He's going to be beating most players, but if Rock shows up scoring like he has been, it's going to be a really tough match for Callan. Um, Got to go Rock to win here. Next match, we have Dave Chisnell versus Andrew Gilding. Chisnell qualified through the top 32 in the world and the Pro Tour Order of Merit for Gilding. Chisnell reached the semifinals in 2021 and Gilding the last 32 in 2016-2017. Uh, they've met nine times. None of those were major tournaments. They met earlier this year in a Euro Tour final where Chizzy took that down. Looking at Gilding's first round match against Robert Owen, he won 3 to 2. He had three 180s, 16 140s, an average of 
and a 40% checkout percentage. Let's see how that compared to his seasonal averages. He played a little worse than normal. Uh, looking at his averages, he's at a 95 for the year with a 102, 103, first nine, first three averages. Looking at Chizzy's numbers, they're all slightly better than Gilding's here. And then we look over at the power rankings, over 120 points higher for Chizzy. Just looking at the numbers alone, that's enough incentive to pick Chizzy. But when you see that Gilding only had an 88 average uh, with three 180s in his previous match, I think you got to go Chizzy to take this one down. All right, next up we have Mervyn King versus the American Danny Bagish. Mervyn qualified through being in the top 32 players in the world and Bagish through the CDC Tour. Um, King made the semifinal in 2009 and the last 32 for Bagish in 2021. They've never played each other. Let's take a look at Bagish's first round stats. Uh, he played Matt Campbell, the Canadian, which is one of his buddies. He had a 93 average. Uh, he threw one 180, 15 140s, and a checkout percentage of 45%. Let's take a look at how this compares to the, the yearly stats and Mervyn's stats. Danny shot better than his yearly average here. Um, he's, you know, he's only showing 90 uh, with a 34% checkout. Mervyn only a 91 with 37. Uh, first nine, first three, they're looking about the same. Mervyn with a slight advantage there. Power rankings, Mervyn's slightly higher. If you look at Darts Oracle's only saying 56% for Merv here. It's pretty much a coin flip here. I might be biased here, but I think if Baggish can play the same way he did in round one, I think he could take Merv down. Going a little bit against the stats here, but got to got to go for the American and with my gut a little bit and pick Baggish to take this one down. All right, match number six. We have Gabriel Clemens versus William O'Connor. Uh, Clemens qualified through being in the top 32. O'Connor through the Pro Tour Order of Merit. Uh, Clemens made the last 16 Worlds in 2021, while O'Connor made the last 32 in 2019 and 2022. They've met each other five times, Clemens taking three of those, and they played each other once in a major in the Players' Championship Final where O'Connor took that down. O'Connor won 3 nothing in the first round against Bo Greaves with 3 180s, 14 140s, a 94.26 average, and a 39.13% checkout. Those are pretty good numbers. Comparing that to his yearly stats and Gabriel's stats, he played a little better than his yearly average and better than Gabriel's average. Looking at first nine and first three, they're pretty much dead nuts. Checkout percentage is close. 180s are close. Power rankings are slightly higher for Willie here. This is another one where these guys are dead even, and it's a coin flip. I'm going to have to go Clemens here. I'm, I think Willie used up all his energy focusing on beating Bo in the first round. All the hype was on that. I think Clemens has been relaxing this whole time, practicing. I think Clemens is going to take this down 3-1 or 3-2. We have Michael Van Gerwen versus Louis Williams. Van Gerwen's in the top 32 in the world, and Louis Williams qualified through the development tour. Michael won this tournament in 2014, 2017, and 2019, and Louis made the last 64 last year. They played each other twice um, in players' championship matches uh, this year and last, and they split those. Let's take a look at Louis' stats from the first round. He averaged 92.8 with three 180s, nine 140s, and a 41% checkout percentage against Neil Zonneveld, and he won that one 3-0. It was a pretty great match to watch. He almost won on a nine darter, but wired out the double 12. Let's see how these numbers compared to the yearly averages. Yeah, Louis only at 88 for the year with 35% checkout and first nine, first three below 97. You look at Michael's numbers, it's not even close. 108 for his first nine, 107 for his first three. Power ranking, 1,971. 329 points higher, 327 points higher. Um, it's no question you got to pick Mike to win this. I don't see Mike would have to literally crumble for the, for Louis to win this match. Yeah, this is a easy this is a easy pick for Mike. Uh, in terms of legs, I'd say you got to go. You got to pick the 3-0. I'm sure the over under is three and a half. You got to pick the under on this one. Um, he's been playing incredible. I wouldn't flip a coin 
to hope that Louie takes a leg here. All right, and the last match of the night is Stephen Bunting versus the American Leonard Gates. Bunting's in the top 32 in the world, and Gates qualified through the North American Championship at Madison Square Garden earlier this year. Bunting made the semifinal of the Worlds in 2021, and this is Gates' debut. They've never played each other, um, and let's take a look at how Gates played in the first round. Gates ended up winning 3-1 to one against Gert Nenches. Um, he had three 180s, 12 140s, an average of 81.37, and a checkout percentage of 45.83. All of those are good except for the average. You look at Geert's average in that match, 78.35. That was a very low standard of a match. Let's take a look at bunting stats for the year. 95 average. First 9, first 3, close to 105. Power rankings 150 points higher than Leonard. I know I didn't back Leonard to win the last time, and I uh, it was because of the stats, and I, I just can't again. I gotta pick Bunting here. Darts Oracle's at 83% for Bunting to win. I'm thinking Leonard takes a set here, starts out strong, maybe takes the first set, but Bunting's gonna get warmed up, and I I think he's just gonna outscore him. And you look at the checkout percentage; he's at close to 39. Gates is at 33. He's just going to get outscored here, I think. With Leonard's finishing issues, uh, I think he might run into some trouble even if he's ahead in the leg. But yeah, got to pick Bunting here. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think about the picks, and I'll see you soon for day eight.